three, two, one. It's a lever shot. Back at it. All right, this is episode two. Um, it is February 23rd, and there's been a lot of news in MMA this week. Uh, so we decided we're going to get together. We're going to go through the middleweight division, uh, talk about some of that news from this week, and uh, we'll recap the very first ever UFC on ESPN card. Um, so we'll start out with the middleweight division, and one of the fights that was announced this week uh, is an interim title fight between Israel Adesanya and Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, and I, right. I think that's the fight to make. Yeah. Um, I think there's been a lot of interim fights, uh, too many interim fights lately, um, interim belts all over the place that haven't amounted to everything. I mean, Tony Ferguson had an interim belt. Yeah. He's never got a title shot. Colby Covington had an interim same. belt. He never had a title shot. So. The same weight class, too. Right. I, I think that um, this scenario is the correct scenario to introduce an interim belt. Uh, I think that these are the two guys you have to have in that fight because they were both in different ways promised to be the next contender. Uh, Kelvin had the fight lined up. He had done he had done um, the last season of Tough with, with Robert, mm-hmm. and um, it was made publicly announced that yeah. the winner of Silva and Adesanya was going to get uh, the following title shot. Um, so that's these... I can understand other people are also deserving, but I think these are the two that you have to put into Yeah. I think the tough thing people are having with is this interim belt came so quickly after Whitaker got hurt that they don't understand the real reason for it. Yeah, it's a shame Whitaker got hurt, but like you said, it makes sense. Gastelum did his job. He was ready to fight, ready to go. Israel will just beat Silva next in line anyway. Hey, we need to keep the middleweight division moving because something else, they don't want to risk Gastelum or Israel getting hurt. Now we're down three of our top five. Now we got to find a new middleweight fight because then you have an open belt and an unclaimed belt. So I think it's the right fight to make. Also, I think absolutely this could be a monster change in the division with that fight alone. Yeah, I mean, I don't object to it being so soon after Whitaker's injury. Uh, The last official heavyweight title fight was July of 2017. Um, there was going to be a rematch in yeah. June. Uh, Yoel didn't make weight, so it wasn't a, a, a title fight. Then they did the tough season. Yep, which so that, came right it, in. that takes another however many months out of it. So th- the belt has not been fought for for going on two years. Yeah. So there's no time to play. You, you got. Yep. I, I think that's why if if that's you know point. that he he had to drop out of this one, he's going to be be on another extended injury leave. You go ahead and say, well, we're, we're bringing in the interim title, yeah. and then he'll fight that, whoever's holding that, whenever he's cleared to fight. Um, as far as how the fight goes, what do you think? So, two different complete fighters. Again, I mean, Gastelum and Whitaker alone were different fighters. Um, I think Israel's overall just uniqueness and what, what he throws in his timing is going to really give Gastelum a challenge to keep up pace-wise because I don't think Gastelum has the best tank in the middleweight as far as not just physical ability. I know everyone gives him a hard time for being kind of chubby, but I don't think he has the cardio. But Gastelum can be a tacticianer. He can be basically a map figure out or where he's finding your path, figures out what you're doing well, tries to stop it, then he puts something new in. It's two guys that are going to try to trick each other, and it takes one of them to fall for it, I think, honestly. I think Israel can come in there, overwhelm him, or Gastelum can play his game, and just one wrong move by Israel will be put out. Because... Israel's been knocked out in glory. Doesn't mean he can't be knocked out in the UFC. Yeah. Same with Gaslam. I I think Israel has not fought anyone as good as Calvin Gaslam yet. Agree. Um, I am surprised to see that Israel is older than Kelvin Gaslam. Yes. And I think it's been like six years since Kelvin won tough. Yes. Uh, so he's been in the UFC for six years. Young. And yeah, they, but they're. He's younger, and he has only a couple more fights than him, uh, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. But I, I, th- I think Israel will win this fight. Um, I think that Kelvin also is not the cream of the middleweight division. Yeah. And I think Israel is going to be good enough, but I think he's going to be tested harder than he, than he has. And I think Kelvin is a smart fighter, and he will do anything he has yeah. to, to uh, use his advantages. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for the fight. Absolutely. Um, and... Uh, where where it goes from there, I I don't know if they'll have a interim title defense 
prior to Robert Whittaker coming back. Yeah. I think with if Robert Whittaker does come back in July, August, like he's expected to, uh, whoever wins this fight will probably yeah. just stay. That's, that's what people got to remember. Whittaker's not going anywhere. It's just an injury relapse. He Like when he fucked his leg up with Romero, um, Romero in the first fight and then came back again and then beat him again, which was even skeptical. Whitaker's going to be around the division for a while. Gaslam's going to be around. Probably Israel's going to be around. These guys are not going to fight just once. They're probably going to fight many of each other several times. Mm -hmm. So people got to remember that in six months from now, we could see even some better lineups and middleweight fights. So um, another fight that is scheduled to happen in the middleweight division is Yoel Romero and Paolo Costa. I believe this fight was scheduled for November. November. What happened there though when it fell fell through? Do you remember? No, I... I don't know if it was a mild injury or they couldn't get it together for the booking date, but this was already scheduled prior and then had to be canceled. There's been a lot of canceled fights that people were looking forward to that had to wait. I mean, but it's still happening. That's that's the thing. Yeah, there was not too much going on in the middleweight division until this week. Yeah. You like, had Rockhold is... and, and Bisbing, and then Bisbing retired. Then it kind of got quiet. Yeah, uh, this was the only fight that was I was interested in, period, in the middleweight division. Um, and, until this week, but I think it's going to be a good matchup. We've got th- this athletic freak who's <sighs> he's super young. He's undefeated in Paulo Costa. The eraser. And then baby. you have this athletic freak who's yeah. old. He's old. 41. He's lost three times in his entire career, and twice have just been his last two fights to Whitaker. Yes. Uh, I guess they're not his last two fights. Uh, two of his last three fights, I think, um, which are to Robert Whitaker. And... Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting matchup. They're both freaks. I think that it's gonna be interesting to see who's ta- who has a bigger take. Yes, because they both are, Again, they both have a lot of that's muscles, a lot, a lot of, frame. of energy. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a lot to carry around at that size. Yeah, so I, I think it's a heavyweight or a, a knockout waiting to happen. Yeah, um, so I that's, that's going what I got decision. on my list. Yeah, I, I agree. I had the same thing. I, I think one two Greek gods as far as built that these guys going at each other. There's probably not many been many matchups with guys that are almost identical style, just age, like you said. Costa, I think, may not win this match for two reasons. One, his tank, like you brought up. And two, we saw the jab that Uriah Hall put on him that Israel said if that was my jab, he would have been knocked out. He does get hit a lot. Costa gets hit a lot. Not big shots, but chipping away, cutting you up. Romero is going to not be in there just for that. He's going to be in there for the one punch knockout, the flying knee, the reversal, the reverse elbow. It's going to come down, I think, to tank mixed with speed and overall punches because if any of them get hurt, it's going to be bad. It's not going to be a recovery hurt. One shot, you're done. Yeah, I just, I've not seen enough of Paulo Costa yeah. to believe that he can beat Yoel Romero in the at this point. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's been very impressive. Uh, but Yoel's beat everyone that I've watched him yeah. fight except for Robert. And bad. And very yeah. and very hurtful. Yeah. So I, I think Yoel does win, but I think it's a, it's going to be an entertaining yeah. fight. Um, another fight that got announced this week is Eric, uh, Anderson Silva against uh, Cannoneer. And that's yeah. going to happen, I think, at UFC 237 in yes. Brazil. Which makes me think it's yeah. Anderson Silva's last fight in the UFC. Big announcement at the end for I, retirement. I think so. Yeah, um, I makes sense. I think it's be a tough fight for him. I really do. I don't. <laughs> What's he? Forty five. Excuse me. I think Anderson's forty five um, by the time this fight happens. He may be. So at the end of the day, no, I think he's turning forty four by the time this fight happens. Okay. Okay. I yeah. knew he was almost middle forties. Yeah, Regardless, now. that would be a telltale story to go out that way. Yeah, I, I could definitely see him. Uh, Hanging it up after this, yeah. Uh, and Which, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd it's applaud be, it's that. It's gonna be a tough one to go out with a victory on. That's for sure. Yeah, that, that's um, that's not an easy. fight. But it is a relevant fight, and I think he wanted to have a relevant fight too. He didn't want to just have a, a walk away just to get the victory. Yeah, so. and I think he he wants to stay in the division with a name that's not just a money money fight. There now, some that I've watched Jared um, can, uh, Canner fight. He's new. He's younger. He's coming in the division. He's up and comer. I think the ring presence and just overall knowledge that Silva has is really going to wear on him. I don't think Jared's going to be able to keep up with the pace. I think Silva's going to hit him with a lot of shots that I don't know if he can just continue to take and not get worn down. I think his tank's going to get hit, which makes Jared not be able to throw his big leg kicks. 
not be able to put the pressure on you. I think Anderson's going to play smart and then put you out once you're tired. I think Anderson's going to play smart and not get hurt. I, I think, think it's going to be a lazy fight. I don't know. I don't, I don't see him being super aggressive. I haven't seen him be that kind of aggressive in a long Probably time. Probably seven really. years, that the old school Silva, where uh, he just walked you down. I mean, it, since since Chris Weidman, he is he has not looked the same since then. Uh, the Bisping fight maybe. Bisping he, he, fight he had was a different. Bit of a back, but yeah, um, I think he is going to look to pick his spots. Um, even against DC, he didn't kind of chip. He didn't get hurt against DC. No, he got, and that's a bigger he lost man every round. But that's a bigger man. Yeah. Um, but I think he's going to play smart, not not get embarrassed, not get knocked out. Maybe try and point him. And then I'll, yeah. always he's looking for the kill shot. Yeah, if, if, if he can, if he can set a trap and the spider catches him, then he'll put him out. But nice. I, I think that I think he loses uh, unanimous decision. Decision. Um, but I pray that he doesn't. Yeah, I don't. I, I just I don't see that getting out of five rounds. But if it does, but, you know, crazier things oh, will happen. It won't be a five round fight. It'll be yeah. a three round fight. Oh yeah, because it's not a championship. Yeah, yeah. It, it won't be the main event of a. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it'll, it'll be a big fight, maybe the co-main, but. Either way, the a, level. I think you're going to see a level change. You're going to see the difference in a seasoned veteran and a new up and comer. That's for sure. Um, and then the last middleweight fight that was announced just this week. Yeah, this was. Kind uh, of, I don't know where. Is uh, Derek Brunson and Elias Theodorou. So, what do you think that one's going to be like? Man, I watched Elias fight earlier this year and last year and the guy's just really smooth and really well on his timing i think he's very patient i think he waits for the right opportunities he doesn't take a ton of damage but he'll still throw in there derek's come off some rough losses here um you know between dealing with the israel fight and you know in the past i think um, he fought uh, Whitaker think, right after yeah, that, Whitter, I think. Uh, Souza fought him. That was a tough fight. Whitaker, yeah, that's obviously tough. He's fought some higher-level guys in there. I mean, you know, Machida, he got a win over. Silva won against him, which was a you know pretty yeah, rough fight. It was a close fight. I, yeah. I guess that could have gotten I mean, look at this. He beat Uriah Hall, and he also beat against Sam Alvey, who fights at heavyweight now, or light heavyweight and heavyweight before. Yeah. Sam Alvey. So, I mean... He's fought a lot of good guys. It's just it's either his night or it's not. But I think that Israel fight really took a lot of confidence out of him. He's either going to come back on fire fueling or he's just not going to be the same fighter. So, I mean, I honestly think – I don't think Elias or Derek knock each other out. I think it goes to the decision Elias tactician are on it. I think he just gets over on the points. You think so? I, th- I think Derek Brunson wins. I think Derek is – Man, good, a lot of difference. Good enough like, to beat anyone who's not like a serious title contender. So basically, <laughs> if you, it's if a you timing. look at the people that he loses yeah, to, it's, that's a good they're point. like all at the top of the division. Okay, but Jacare, Israel. Kelly, Kelly was 42 years old in that fight. The guy was literally my uncle's age. Yeah, I'm going to hope Derek Brunson beats you. The yeah, guy's not a, always fighting the cream of the crop. I, I think he's beating the people he's supposed to beat. And losing against the top contenders. But is Elias that next step in the middleweight division, or is he just not? Because the middleweight division's tenacity and just killers is what makes it the middleweight division. You're basically dealing with normal lightweights that punch like lightweights but can cut to 170 or uh, to 185. Yeah. So I I don't know. If he can get in the league and he can put it on Derek, that's a big jump. That's a really big jump in the fight. Yeah, it's it's really tough right now for anyone to get a run going yep. in the middleweight division. Yeah, you we, brought up a great yeah. point about that. We were just talking about how there are only five ranked fighters in the middleweight division who have at least two wins in a row right now. Everyone, else, I mean, they're they're beating That's each insane. other up. Uh, there's a couple of them on big win streaks. Israel and Paulo Costa are both still yep. undefeated, um, but no one has. Three three wins in a row or something like that. No. I mean, it's, it's those guys and and Robert Whitaker, the champion. So um, it's it's hard to get up to the top of the middleweight uh, division. And if you can string together two or three wins against ranked uh, fighters, that then you're instantly the yeah. next contender because everyone else it's is a small is dropped. window. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that's what's making the middleweight division uh, interesting right now, and. So let's talk about some fights we'd like to see in the middleweight division. Yeah. Uh, do you have any in mind? So obvious one I'm sure we both have is Israel versus Whitaker. I, I think it's just going to happen eventually. So obviously I'm going to put it in the rankings. I think 
Whitaker's new style to the middleweight because he has a very unique style and he has good timing, good coaching, and just I think he's a different type of middleweight. He doesn't look the fastest or anything else, but he, he gets the job done. Israel, obviously, we already talked about just mesmerizing kind of the new Anderson Silva with his own flair. I think a fight like that would really show the caliber of people that are in the middleweight division to basically say, these two guys are the top right now, and five guys below them could be in that same spot, no question asked. It's not like the heavyweight division or sometimes the featherweight division where if you're in the top five, you're meant to be there, you're the best of that division, no one's coming up close. A top nine guy could be in top three the next week because they're fighting all of each other just in a cycle. So I think Whitaker and the Israel fight's just a different entertaining middleweight fight to bring people to pay more attention to the middleweight division. Yeah, I I like that fight. I think that uh, Robert Whitaker is extremely well-rounded. Yeah. And Israel is the best striker in the middleweight division. 100%. And I think that it would be a very interesting fight. I think that Robert Whitaker has too much going on right now for Israel. I don't think Israel's seen enough at a high level to... Um, I mean, he, I guess you always can catch him. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that overall, uh, Robert's experience is going to be the biggest factor yeah. in, in this fight. And I do think it happens. I think that Israel will beat Kelvin and that he will hold out on to making any more fights until Robert returns. So it's uh, guaranteed that unification title fa- uh, belt. Not that he's scared or anything, but... No. Uh, I, th- I think he's been looking for a break. He's been fighting a lot. He's been very active. Um, so I think after this fight, he's got the interim belt in the hand, and he can. He's this is this is my ticket to the yep. to uh, Roberts not fighting anytime soon. We're, we're both gonna take the we know, opportunity. We know, yeah, we've got six months. We can we can really focus on yep. each other and do it. Um, what I'm hoping happens, <laughs> or what I was hoping happened. Uh, if they went a different direction with the interim belt, um, I'd like to see a Rockhold out of Sanya fight before he moves up. Allegedly, Rockhold moving up, yeah, to like yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know if it's. I don't know happen, if he's going to. But that's the problem. Been, yeah, there's been talk about it. That could be three less fights a year that the middleweight division could get with Rockhold because when he was active, he was still fighting a lot, and yeah. they were all big boy fights. So now you lose a guy that maybe. Could have fought two, three more years in the middleweight and maybe got his belt back. Yeah, Rockhold has one fight in 2016, one fight in 2017, yeah. one fight in 2018, and it was February of 2018. Yeah, so he's taken um, some time off. Yeah, so you wouldn't even have got three fights out of him, but that's still big boy fights because his last couple fights, Yoel Romero knocked him out cold, obviously. Came back before then and beat David Branch after the Michael Bisbing loss. One against Rockhold, one against Machida, Fought top, you know, huge fighters. He's literally one fight away right now, depending on this Costa Romero fight. He could be right back in there going for the title. And that's why I think him and Adesanya was a good fight. Exactly. Because neither of them have fought Whitaker yet. Yes. So the winner of that, I think, is the clear shot at Whitaker. Hits the peak. Because Whitaker has beaten Sosa before. Uh, He's just beat UL twice. Uh, I believe he's beat Weidman. Yes. Um, I believe he has. I'm not sure about that actually, um, but I think that that was if they if if uh, the UFC had decided to have a Kelvin yeah. and Whitaker fight and not do the interim, um, that I would I would have loved to see this in in the meantime. Um, I'd still love to see this as a um, title fight. Although I don't think Luke Rockhold now deserves a, an interim title fight. It, no, it I made more sense. So, yeah. It was not for a for a title, um, but I just I thought that'd be a good matchup. I like that. I'd love to see Luke Rockhold get his head yeah, <laughs> taken off bounce again. On the, bounce off I don't the know. I, I, I was I was a big Rockhold fan, and then after Bisbing did that, I I love seeing it happen. That so, was, uh, that was such I thought, a yeah. I thought David beautiful. Bridge was going to do it again, and then and then Yoel got him. Uh, Yoel so, really got him. Yoel yeah. tried to put him through the cage. Right. Yeah. That was a uh, that was a great fight. I like watching Rockhold fight. I don't know how he's still the number two contender uh, ever. He's a motherfucker, but here, he but... just does not have the chin of some of the middleweights. Yeah, I think he's, he's skilled as hell, but... He's skilled beyond belief. Mm-hmm. I think his chin does not match his skill. Um, but yeah, so that, that would be the other one on my wish list. I like it. And I like that. So let's say Kelvin and Israel do fight in this interim fight, yep. and Israel wins. Who do you think Kelvin gets after that? Probably, probably Sozo. 
Yeah, you think that's the fight to make? I, th I I had that on my list. I said if Gastelum loses or Gastelum is put in a situation where he's not fighting the top two contenders, Sosa's got a great record. Sosa just came off a Chris Weidman win, knockout, which nobody thought was going to happen. That was in November. Okay, he lost to Gastelum. Here's an opportunity to come back and do it again. He's beat Brunson. We know the situation there. Boach lost to Whitaker, who obviously is a champ. So Souza, again, like Derek Brunson, has lost to guys that he should have lost to, but has won against guys he definitely should have won against. Israel is the only fight that Derek Brunson's experience should have overtaken Israel, but Israel is growing at such a fast pace that he's blowing through people like Derek Brunson that five years ago people were kind of nervous about in the division. He was doing dangerous things. Then a couple fights at high level, same with Luke Rockhold. They're right there at the finish line, then they trip, someone passes them every time. Yeah, I, I just think that they fought so recently. I mean, that was Kelvin's last fight. No, and, and, I, and I agree. It's a matchup to I, make right away. And I agree as far as numbers go and, and putting a fight out there and getting pay-per-views or getting people to buy it, that's kind of shitty. But if Luke goes up to light heavyweight, who else you got? Are, are you going to throw Chris Reidman back in the mix for no reason? Now, granted, if Paul Costa loses to Romero, oh, I think have be him and Gaslam. Yeah, because that's better. Because two guys coming off monster losses. Costa, that's his first loss in the UFC, especially against a guy that could have taken him to a title shot. Loses against Romero, hypothetically. Gaslam, same thing. Loses against Israel. Maybe gets beat up, has to take some time off. Comes back, fights... Obviously, Chris Weidman, who's had some tough four years here recently, who's on a losing streak. Let them bang it out. See the difference. Yeah, I actually I like that fight more. I like that. I do too. I think that's going to sell more, then, and I think yeah. that fight will be way more entertaining. Who, on whoever loses that fight is is monstrous. Should, oh yeah, I should fight Kelvin if he loses. I guess the the two losers of the two yeah. fights should fight each other. Yeah, that's that'd, very that'd simple. Be, yeah, that'd be good. Um, is there anyone outside of the top ten right now, or or lower in the rankings that you think? Is a, is a fighter to watch the middleweight division this year? Yeah, you know, I brought up a guy that I have actually been following for about six fights, actually. I actually got to watch before he got in the UFC, Antonio Carlos Jr. So kind of a smaller middleweight, but very talented all around. Um, Five-fight five win streak right now. Thing that impresses me is, okay, middleweights, like I said earlier, throwing bombs. They're light heavyweights that cut to 185 but punch like a light heavyweight. He's on a five-fight winning streak. Four out of the five of those wins were rear naked chokes. That's very new in the division to have somebody that heavy on jujitsu or just grappling that's choking guys out where most guys are knocking or finishing guys out. So now Sozo's got a great black belt. We know that. Luke's even got good jujitsu but doesn't use a bunch. But I'm talking like your Paula Costas, your Brunsons, your Jared Kinners, Brad Tavares's. People coming in want to bang. This kid's coming up through the ranks, and if he gets a hold of some of these guys, I think he'll show there's a different part of the game. So I think his next fight coming up, maybe get a guy that's, you know, 9, 10, maybe fight Brad Tavares even, see if he can hang it with a higher level. But I, I see him doing a splash this year. Yeah, Antonio Carlos Jr., um, he, uh, he's another one of those fighters who uh, is on a, on a big win streak. Um, like I said, not too many of them in the middleweight division. He's one of them. Um, is there anyone else you're looking at? You know, I got a, what I just talked about a minute ago, Brad Tavares. I think he can do big things. I'm, I'm looking at his background and record. I mean, he's not fought any slouches. He was undefeated all the way up until the Israel fight, which obviously we know he lost an decision even. He didn't even get knocked out. But, you know, I don't know. Brad's fought some good guys, but I think this is a time where one big win again moves him up the ranks quick. But uh, I just like the way he fights. I think he comes at you and just kind of a new, entertaining, younger guy. I mean, you know, he's 31, but that's pretty young nowadays in the middleweight division. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, there are some some younger guys. That's I, was, I was really surprised to see Keldon's age. Uh, yeah. Whitaker's also pretty young. Israel, Very young. Paulo Costa, uh, those guys are all pretty young. Antonio Carlos Jr., 28. Yeah. Uh, so so, there, so there, are, there are a bunch of guys under 30 who are going to be around for a while, and, and I think that they're going to continue to beat each other. Oh, I think it's a we'll, cycle. Yeah, because they're so young and so good, we'll see all of them fight all, all of them. Which is great because it's entertaining as times. fuck. Yeah, so I, I think the middleweight division right now is muddy. Uh, like we said, there hasn't been a title fight in almost two yeah. years. That's, a, that's um, a great point you brought up. I did not realize that. 
there's a, there's a lot of top contenders that have that have already fought each other, um, some of them multiple times. Who do you think comes out of this year as the title holder? I think healthy that the matchup he has next in the possible matchup again with Whitaker, or not again, first time ever by the end of the year because it's only going to be March next week. I think Israel does take this belt. I think the reason is if Israel can do his prolonged plan or with a quick knockout on Gastelum, I don't see Whitaker taking the belt from him because Whitaker basically will watch his belt be taken without him even fighting. I think him beating Gastelum, Whitaker's like, that could have been me. I could have beaten Gastelum. I could have fought Israel right away and beaten him. I think Israel has the momentum right now on this win streak. He's just stomping everybody. But then I could be wrong, and everybody could say you beat a 43-year-old Anderson Silva. That's not as impressive. Yeah, and I mean, he's knocked out by Gastelum in two rounds. All you can do is win. I mean, yeah, he, he, all he's it. done is win. You can, it's all you he can knows. Say, yeah, you can't beat someone that's better than the person you're you're fighting. You can yeah. only beat the person you're fighting. And he's beaten all of them. Yeah. I don't think he's fought anyone like Robert yet. I think that uh, they're, not, they're not going to strip Robert. Robert. I love Robert. He's, no. He, he's a fighter. I mean, I, my understanding is Dana loves him because of it. He he won't turn down fights. He he has le- legitimately been unlucky with these injuries. Yeah. And I heard he was willing to fight this one when a when the wrong For, yeah, yeah, the where. wrong punch or kick is going to kill you. And he's like, oh no, it's fine. I'll I'll go out there yeah. and fight. And they wouldn't let him. Yeah. Um. So. I, I think he's he's a great champion for him. Um, he is great for uh, expanding into that part of the world. Yes. Uh, I guess Israel is as well. Yep. Uh, but I, I think that they're not going to strip him, uh, no matter yeah. how long this takes. And I think that he will fight this year. I think it'll be against Israel, and I think that Robert will win. So I think Robert nice. Whitaker will be... I like that. The, uh, That'll be interesting the champion to watch. going into 2020. I think Israel Adesanya will be the champion at some point. Like I said, I, I think this belt moves around quite a bit here in the next several years yeah. uh, because there's a bunch of young, really good guys who are who are all going to fight each other. Um, and it's going to hard, be hard to go on, on a serious run like yeah. Anderson Silva did. Uh, so I, I think that he will be a champion, but I don't think it'll be this year. Gotcha. So uh, we can move on to some more news that came out this this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, George St. Pierre announced his retirement. 